So following his loss to Hori Masvidal, Ben Askren has come out and done a pretty nice interview with Ari Helwani on the MMA Hour, or on uh, Ari Helwani's MMA show, I guess is what it's called now. Uh, but he's also done a few more interviews and pieces for some of the other um, programs that he works on, including Rudis, which is a clothing sponsor that he does a podcast with. He did a video talking about how to deal with failure after the loss. Um, but it seems like for him, he, he obviously got a concussion from that fight, but the injuries aren't as serious as some may have been concerned that they would have been. So I think we're getting to a point now where it, it sounds like he's looking to keep fighting. It sounds like he's probably not going to have to miss a serious amount of time from injury. So it, it's probably about time to start looking at who his next fight's going to be. And from what I've seen online, there's been a lot of people talking about one specific opponent that they want to see him see or want to see him fight, but no one's really talking about another opponent, which I think is actually a much better matchup, uh, not just from a technical standpoint, but also just from a timing standpoint. So if we look at the rankings right now, now that they've been adjusted for this fight, uh, you see that obviously the champion is Kamaru Usman, Tyron Woodley still at number one, so right behind him. Uh, Colby Covington at number two, and that's then where Hori Masvidal jumps in at number three, moving ahead of RDA. Uh, so now RDA is number four, Darren Till is number five, Wonderboy, number six, uh, Anthony Pettis, number seven, Ponzinibbio, eight, Ben Askren, nine, Robbie Lawler, 10, Demi and Maya, 11, Leon Edwards, also tied at 11. And then they have Neil Magny at 13, uh, Elizio Dos Santos, or Elizio Capoeira, as he may be known, at 14, and then Vicente Luque at 15. So if you're looking for another fight for Ben Askren, you're going to be looking at other people who are ranked and probably ranked around him. So with him being ranked number nine, he's kind of in a spot where he could pivot the other way. So he could either either fight someone who's a few spots ahead of him, which would be probably all the way up to the number five range, uh, or a few spots below him, which could potentially go all the way down to like Alessio Capoeira. Or, I don't know that you'd really bring him in to fight Vicente Luque, but that's I, I guess that's technically a possibility too. Uh, so as far as looking at this list and looking at who makes sense for him, uh, RDA at number four. I think RDA is already booked right now, and quite honestly, I don't know that it would make sense to put him up against RDA right now anyway. Uh, Darren Till at number five. Now, this is where a lot of people have been talking about a potential fight. So, if we all remember, after the Robbie Lawler fight, Ben Askren went around or went out to uh, watch Darren Till fight Hori Moss at all, and he was under the assumption that Darren Till was going to win that fight, and he was saying, hey, look, once Till wins this fight, I'm going to take Darren Till next. So, there was a lot of hype being built in this Askren versus Till fight. Uh, as we all know, though, Darren Till ended up losing that fight and ended up getting knocked out in the second round by Hori Masvidal. Uh, Askren did take the winner of that fight, which was Masvidal instead of Darren Till. Uh, Darren Till hasn't fought since then. Uh, Askren just fought and had his loss to Masvidal as well. Uh, but if we look at Till's record, one of the things we talk about with Darren Till, I think this is kind of funny that this is the picture that was chosen on Sherdog. He's a guy who's very big for the weight class at 170. A lot of people have talked about him potentially moving up. I, I think he still should move up, especially now that he's on a two-fight losing streak at welterweight. His last two fights, he had the loss to Tyron Woodley back in September 8th of 2018. Uh, got knocked down and then got put out with a, what they say is a Bravo choke. I thought it was a Darce choke. I don't know if there's necessarily a difference. I just always call it a Darce. Uh, and then also had that loss back in March to Hori Masvidal. So for me, Till should probably move up a weight class. But if he's going to stay down a weight, I, I guess the next fight for him, if you're talking specifically for Darren Till, it probably would make sense for him to fight someone who's a little bit more grappling centric. Uh, just so the risk of getting put on his ass for a third straight fight isn't quite as high, but that's, that would be arguing what's best for Darren Till. Uh, then you look at wonder boy Thompson. He's coming off a loss by knockout to Anthony Pettis, although he is one spot ahead of Pettis. So, not sure how that works out, where they're one spot apart and the guy who lost the fight is ahead of the guy who won the fight, but that's where we're at. Uh, Pettis has his fight with Nate Diaz coming up. Um, so, a- anyway, back to Wonderboy. I don't know that Wonderboy is at a point right now where he's looking for his next fight, but would it make sense to put Ben Askren up against a guy who's a really good striker right after he got knocked out in five seconds? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, that'd be the argument I'd make. Um, Anthony Pettis is busy right now, and Pettis and Askren are teammates. Although it's kind of funny that Pettis had made mention that he felt like Askren was probably a lot better than him. So the thought of Pettis being ranked ahead of Askren is pretty funny. Or at least, I, I mean, I guess it's a little bit different when you're in the gym. You're, you're not going to go full blast on each other. So if you're a striker like Pettis and maybe you, you have a chance of knocking a guy out, like Askren out in a fight, you're not going to be doing that in the gym. So it's not quite as easy to tell if that's how the fight would go. But whatever the case may be, it sounds like, at least from a sparring standpoint, that Askren seemed to get the better of him. I uh, have Santiago Ponson at number eight. Uh, he hasn't fought for quite a while, although I think he's lined up right now for a fight. Uh, so it looks like he's booked. 
obviously Askren at number nine, Robbie Lawler, maybe you think about doing that rematch, but he's busy with Colby Covington right now. So there's no point in even looking at that. Uh, and then we have Demi and Maya at 11. To me, this is the fight to make. Demi and Maya versus Ben Askren is a fight that needs to be made at some point. We, we all watch as Ben Askren takes people down and just mauls them on the ground. And there's always this question, well, what if he faces an elite jiu-jitsu guy? Demi and Maya is that elite jiu-jitsu guy at welterweight not right now who's actually ranked. There are other elite jiu-jitsu guys who have either passed through welterweight or who are still at welterweight. Guys like Sergio Marias, I think Davi Hamos. Uh, is a lightweight now, but I believe he fought at welterweight at least against uh, Sergio Marais. So there are some elite jiu-jitsu guys sitting around, but the one guy who would actually make sense to put against Ben Askren is Damian Maya. There's Askren's at nine, Maya's at 11. The rankings make sense for these guys to fight right now. Uh, if you look at Maya's recent record, uh, he had a strong run where he worked his way to a title shot, uh, beat Alexander Yakovlev, Ryan LaFleur, Neil Magny, Gunnar Nelson, Matt Brown, Carlos Condit, Jorge Masvidal, by split decision. Uh, but then he lost his title fight against Tyron Woodley, lost to Colby Covington, lost to Kamaru Usman. Uh, but since then, has put together a couple of wins, beat Lyman Good and just beat Anthony Rockham Martin. And it, it sounds like for Damian Maya, he's pretty much on the last rung of his career. He's probably got a few more fights left, probably like a year left, maybe not even two years left. So for him, if there are any interesting matchups you want to see Maya in, they've, they've got to be made soon. They've got to be made pretty much right about now. And to me, that matchup with an Askren is a very interesting matchup. So if you're going to make an Askren versus Maya fight or an Askren versus an elite jiu-jitsu guy fight, that there is no better time than now to make this fight. Um, and plus, because of the fact that Ben Askren got knocked out as badly as he did, there's, there's a good argument to say that putting him against a grappler would also be good. Granted, there was the argument that putting Till against a grappler would be good too. But if we're looking out for specifically for Askren, this fight versus Damian Maya is a fight that a lot of a lot of grappling, I guess we call ourselves grappling nerds. A lot of grappling nerds have really been wanting to see this fight for quite a while. Uh, now is a really good time where it can be made. These guys are only separated by two spots in the rankings. Don't make the Till fight right now. Try to get Till to go up to Walter Wade, but if Till doesn't want to go to Walter Wade, there are plenty of other fights for him to prove that he's a top contender if he still wants to contend for the Walter Wade belt. But to me, Demi and Maya, Ben Askren, this fight needs to happen. Let's make it happen.